Welcome back. Uh, today, what we're going to do is install a Tsunami sound car by Soundtracks. Um, basically, what we have here is the sound car decoder. We have the speaker and baffle kit that is included. And optional, you can use a current keeper. I'm actually going to save this current keeper for something else, so I'm not going to use this today. Alright, so what do you need in order to put a sound car in some rolling stock? Well, first, you got to have rolling stock. Um, you need to have something that is enclosed. A flat car, a gondola, one of those are not going to work. You need something such as a box car, a covered hopper. Um, I'm going to use a stock car today. Right now, uh, on my layout, I currently have two uh, rolling stocks that have a sound car. I have a PS1 box car, and I also have another stock car. This can go in things such as cabooses. It can go in um, some of your passenger cars if you want it to, because there are some pretty neat uh, sound options on there. But for this video, we're going to do it in a stock car, and when we program this, we're going to enable the B spinner mode. All right. So before we get started, um, I just want to make sure, remind everybody to subscribe. And hit that like button um, and comment, you know, on my, on my videos. Uh, also make sure that you hit that bell so that way you can get future notifications. All right, so first thing you gotta have, like I said, you gotta have a car. The next thing you need is metal wheels of some type. Now you can go to uh, Athern or some of the other manufacturers and they have pre-electrical wheel sets. Um, but for me, I'm on a tighter budget and I'm gonna show you a way how you can actually make your own as long as you got the metal wheels. All you need is a set of trucks and one of the little coupler things, I don't know what this thing's called, so if anybody knows what the name is, please comment and let me know. Um, basically, I have modified my own wheel sets with a wire, and I have used one of those little coupler things and soldered my wire to it. And basically, to get the, the pickup of the rail, you can take the sides of this thing and and fan them out like so and then just cut your coupler down to size now before you do any of that you're going to want to solder your wire on first so that way you can cut down to size and glue as needed because if you try to solder your wire on after you glue it you're going to end up melting your truck and that's just not going to be a good thing and then you just got to go buy more trucks and yeah don't make that mistake been there done that okay so one of the other suggestions I can tell you is on the wire, um, I don't know exactly what gauge this is, this is some scrap wire that I have, but I probably would have been better off going with a smaller gauge. Uh, this is a little heavy, but um, it's doable. So, all right, first thing we need to do, I've got my Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe stock car here. Uh, first thing, we're going to take the wheels off. Now, if I'm not mistaken, this is an older Athern Blue Box brand. So it's got the flat screws. All right, so there's the first truck. And what I can do with these trucks here is I can actually go ahead and modify another uh, electrical pickup for when I get ready to do my next sound car. Now the thing about sound car is you don't want one in every single car your consist. Otherwise it's just gonna crowd too much sound. But a good sound would be every four to five cars in your consist. And the caboose at the end is always a great thing because if you decide to, you know, if you're doing some type of switching operations, you know, in and out of industries, uh, there's actual whistles for the caboose. Pretty cool. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to figure out where I need to drill my holes through the metal weight. I am going to set that my wire here and I want something that's gonna give it, you know, some good 
uh, consistency where it's not going to pull too much. So probably what I will end up doing is I'm not going to drill through the center, but I'm probably going to drill right there in that corner for that axle. So that way it's picking up the left rail. And then I need to do the opposite on this side. And I'm going to do this here on this side of the axle. Okay. I'm going to set those out of the way. Take the plastic under frame. Move it out of the way as well. And see if I can't get the weight off. Alright, there's my weight. And on my weight, it's very rusted, but I can barely see where my holes need to be drilled. Rusted under frame, probably a little better to use. The other thing I will need to do is to go ahead and take the uh, bottom piece of the shell out. And sometimes you have to kind of get a screwdriver to pry these apart. So, But be gentle because you definitely don't want to break it. Otherwise, that's not going to be good either. And then you'll just have to choose another car and you end up losing one. Alright, so there's, there's the body. Alright, we're just going to set the shell to the side. Alright, so drilling. Use pliers. Otherwise, you're going to burn yourself and that's not going to be good. So I'm going to go ahead and hold that. I'm going to scoot away and see if I can't try to drill that metal out. And there's my hole. Ooh, that's warm. All right, I'm gonna do the other, other side. Now we have a drilled frame. Next thing I'm gonna do is make sure that's good and cool. I'm going to go ahead and put that back under the floor. And yeah, I've got some burrs. So if you got burrs, I don't want that problem. There's the file. Having a good file can help with that. All right, now let's see if that sits a little better. There we go. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is take my drill and I'm gonna cut through right through the floor. Like so. Flip to the other side. All right done with the drill and of course someone would be trying to call me while I'm doing this but hey that's normal I guess all right now what I'm going to do is take my exacto and just trim the burrs off of it as well because we don't need that getting in the way If somebody really wants me. All right. All right. Now we have our axle 
with our holes for our truck. So now we can proceed by going ahead and putting the under frame back on and we can go ahead and get our trucks connected. And what I probably should have done here, because I can tell, is I probably should have made my hole a little bigger over to the other side on that hole. Let's see how this one looks. Uh, that one, that one works a little better. I don't think it's going to make too much of a difference, but we'll try it anyways. Worst case, you can always go back and expand your hole bigger. Another thing is you probably want to use black wire. Um, I can always go back and uh, spray paint that later. But this is, you know, mainly just for a, a demonstrational tutorial. So this one doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. Get my screw from the other trucks. And there we go. There. All right, looks like we've got the hardest part done. All right, now for the easy part. Now, we're gonna wanna save on to this because that's our instructions and also CV options as well for programming. So I'm just gonna put that to the side. And let's put this up. And we'll go ahead and get our speaker out while we're at it. Well, we're gonna try to, there we go. And that's even got CV values on it as well. So we'll hang on to that too. All right. Get that out of here. Okay, so here we have the speaker snapped into the baffle kit. And what I'm going to use is, I'm actually gonna use the speaker, the, the baffle extender, and the, the backing. Um, the back, using the extender kind of gives it more of a deeper volume. Um, Sometimes you can put those in locomotives and sometimes you can't. You just gotta stick to the regular baffle. But just to get a deeper volume, we are going to do this. All right. I need to step away for just a minute, so I'm gonna take a break and we're just gonna come right back where we left off. Okay, I'm back. So, just exactly where we left off. So here is the actual sound car decoder. This, we're gonna want mounted up to the top of the roof. And it doesn't have to be centered. Um, sometimes centering it makes it easier, but the whole purpose of that is to use our magnetic wand and we slide it across the top. That's what's gonna connect the sound car to the train and also disconnect it. Um, when you attach it later. Um, so some neat features about the sound car as it's attached. If you uh, change the braking mode um, in your train instead of using locomotive brakes and you use consist brakes, when your train starts to brake, you won't hear your locomotive brake. All your sound cars that are attached to it, you'll hear the brake squeal on it. So it's really, really cool when you start using the braking feature. Okay, so first thing we need to do is we need to look at 
um, our wires. Which wires are we going to use? Which wires are we not going to use? For this installation, I know we are going to use, let's see here, I'm not going to use any lighting. So as far as lighting goes, that would be the blue, the white, and the yellow. So I'm not going to need any of those. All right. Let's see, black wire is a pickup, so we're keeping it. The purples, ah, that's the speakers, so we're definitely keeping those as well. And let's see, I have a brown and a green. Those are for more lighting functions, so we won't use those. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut all of these wires off that we're not using because we definitely don't want these to show up since we're using a stock car. We don't want those to really be seen through. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut all of these unusable wires off. Okay. But this is wire that I can use for something else later down the road. All right, so let's go ahead and move those off. All right, and then the next thing I'm gonna do on all of these is we're going to go ahead and strip the ends. I'll strip the ends, hopefully not cut them. All right, there's one. Because we'll have to get the solder out and, you know, tin our wires. All right. And I will cut these down to size um, later when I need to. So wiring up a sound car is definitely a whole lot easier than a locomotive because I mean, especially for a stock car or a box car or a covered hopper, you're only using six of these. You could also put these in an open hopper if you have a load to go in there for the load to hide it. Um, enclosed auto racks, good um, containers. Um, you could put those in there as well. All right, now the next piece. What I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and get these two purples and I want to feed those through the hole on here and it looks like one of my holes is clogged. So what I'll need to do is get my X-Acto knife and see if I can't try to open these holes up. There we go. Because that's what's going to solder to our speaker. Now I'm sure we could have went ahead and glued these speaker casings together but I'm a little more difficult. Okay. Next thing I'm gonna do is kinda cut these burrs off. Off of all the speaker housing. Okay. Make sure we do that right. All right, so that will go in. Oops. That one will go in just like so. No. Well, maybe this way. Here it goes. All right. Okay. And I'm just going to kind of get some. This is plastic weld. Like, it's pretty good stuff. Get that in there and get our casing glued together. All right. And then now I gotta figure out which side for the speaker. So we'll go ahead and run the two wires through here.
These wires are so flimsy. Okay. All right, so that's the right side. And I'm gonna do roughly the same thing. Get most of it glued so that way I don't get my wires caught up. Okay, get that glued in. All right. So there's our speaker casing. Okay. Now I gotta get the soldering iron heated up and get some flux. I shall return. Okay, I've got flux. Flux is our friend. And all right, so next thing we're gonna do is tin our wires. So I'm gonna go ahead and dip all of these in the flux and get them ready to be tinned. And we need solder. Now what did I do with my solder? All right, let me, oh, it's right in front of me, duh. Okay. Get a little bit of solder on the soldering iron. And then I'm just going to take the ends of the wires and just dab it in there. Like so. Now our wires are tinned. Alright, the next thing we're going to use is some of this insulated uh, stuff for our wires. I'm going to go ahead and cut a couple of pieces off and I'm going to put them on this side here. No. I'm going to get see if I can't try to clean these up here. Okay. So that way we've got tubing, well, I'll put one on the red and one on the black. That way we have tubing for our connections. Okay, so now all we have to do is solder. And I'm gonna see if I can find my clip thing if I put it somewhere because I'm not seeing that in front of me no nope, it's right here right off to the side this thing is very handy so all it is is a small piece of looks like cardboard with a clothesline um, turned inside out and glued to it and that's great for holding things when you're trying to solder okay so we will go ahead and do our red lead and I'm actually going to try this the other way Flux on the wire. Make sure I have a little bit of solder. And I do. And we're going to see if we can solder those two together like so. And then I'm going to slide this, this uh, tubing. Maybe slide it over it. Okay, I've got a burr. So I'm gonna see if I can't get my solder connection just a little better. I gotta 
wait for my solder iron to heat up again. There we go. Now let's see if everything will slide. There we go. Like so. Take that. I'm going to use my iron to heat and shrink. And that will help keep our connection secured. Alright, now we're going to do the same thing with the black wire. Nothing smells better than uh, <clears throat> electrical solder smoke. Just joking. Whew, that stuff is stout. Okay. So I got my wire solder together. I pull the shrink tube over the solder connection. And I'm basically using my soldering iron to heat up the tubing to uh, shrink it. Okay. All right, now the speaker. So let's see which wire is positive. Does it tell us which one is positive? No, it does not. So this must be one of those speakers that it really doesn't matter. Some, some speakers do and some don't. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put my speaker all the way in so I don't damage it. I'm gonna take my first lead, a little too long, so I'm gonna cut it down. And we're going to see if we can get that solder there heated up. We can stick the wire in, like so. Same thing on the marked red side. Whoops, come out. I'm going to cut this one down just a little as well. There we go. There we go. Now our speaker is wired in. Should be able to pull our wires back like so and snap the speaker in place. It's actually kind of compressed in place. Okay. Now as far as getting these attached in the car, what I like to do is take the speaker and I'll turn it sideways um, with the wires at the top. It's got a real, real good fit when you do that. I mean, real, real good fit. And then I will take my uh, sound card and I'm gonna actually mount mine over on the other side. I will get some electrical, black electrical tape to go over it. And I'm gonna just get enough that's just barely wider than the car because I don't want electrical tape along the whole side. And pull this back up. Now the trick to it is, is here you got the two capacitors, this side's flat. This is the side that you want up against the roof of the car. So I'm gonna take my tape, just stick it kind of in the middle, go along, put it dead center along the roof, And get that tucked in there like so and then the next thing I'm going to do is take all the wires 
and group them together. Well, all but the speaker wires. The speaker wires are not really in the way. But I'm just going to get just a little bit of tape, not a lot, just to go and hold these wires together. Okay. Now we're just going to take the wires, feed them in. Turn our core upside down and see if we can get see if we can get it stuck back in. I think I got it on backwards. There we go. There we go. All right, I got half of it done. I'm gonna slide that door back to see if I can grab this a little easier. Get that back on. I guess I had a piece break off earlier, but it'll be okay. It's not gonna hurt it much. Okay. We'll slide the door closed and ta-da we have our sound car so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause this video and we're gonna go program it real quick okay welcome back everyone um, now I have our stock car that I put on and as you can see it moves fairly well even with the uh, connections there so just to make sure that we have sound to it Default address is three. I uh, don't know if you can see this or not, but I'm just going to walk you through as I'm doing this. So to make sure that we have connectivity, you can hit the horn. And the horn will blow. So that lets us know. Now, as far as um, this car, basically what we're going to want to do is put in Beast Banner. Now, Beast Banner, you have three options. Default is... Um, you know turned off but you have an option for cattle you also have an option for sheep um so basically you know i'm gonna have a stockyard on my layout so i'm gonna need cattle because i've got a meat packing place as well for to take the cattle from the stockyard and the ranch to the meat packing place uh, so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to go to program and we're going to hit enter for program loco on the main. We're going to program loco three. I'm not going to change the address. I'm just going to keep it at three, but I am going to change CV. All right, so the CV for B spanner is 226. So 226, enter. And the value that the cattle is is one. So I'm going to put one. Now, when I hit enter, you're going to hear the sound car go. Doo -doo -doo -doo, and that lets you know that it took a value. So here we go. Okay, now you got the cow sound as well. All right, so let me escape out of programming. Some of the other things that you could program is the braking rate, acceleration rate. Um, let's see, master volume. You can change the bell. Uh, rolling stop, stock type. Uh, moving sound scaler. Um, there's different options. You can go to Soundtracks' website. And actually look to see um, you know what decoders do what but as far as the purpose of this one the only thing that I really wanted to program was CV value 226 which is the beast banter mode right. here in front of me I have a GP 35 locomotive and two sound cars attached just for the instructional video I'm gonna leave my locomotive uh, on mute because I want you to hear the two uh, stock cars that have the tsunami sound installed um, you can already hear the cows mooing, but if I was to move the locomotive forward or in reverse, you will not hear any of the flange squeal. And that's what I want you to hear. Um, so in order to get those sounds, what we'll have to do is add those to this locomotive by using a magnetic wand. All right. 
So I'm just going to rub the wand over the, uh, the stock car and you should hear the handbrake release. And then the next thing I'm going to do is hit the function 8 uh, four times to uh, add air into the air tank reservoirs. Now, with this MTH locomotive, also when I hit function 8, it's going to try to tell this back coupler to disengage. So, I will have to try to connect it back. Okay. So, now we're connected. So now we're going to move forward. Okay, and then once I stop the locomotive, of course, you no longer hear the uh, wheel flange squeals and the clickety clack. Um, our, theoretically, you would want to have these cars spaced out, you know, pretty far with at least you know four or five cars with no sound car in between them. Um, these can go in passenger cars. They can also go in cabooses. Uh, if you got a dummy locomotive, you can put it in there as well, and you can do the lighting effects with that. Um, so I hope this, um, you know, gave you some inside information as to, you know, installing the sound car and doing, you know, just a basic program on it. And, um, you know, like I said, hit subscribe, um, hit the bell, you know, hit the thumbs up, let me know how I'm doing. And if you got any comments, you know, feel free to share and, you know, go from there. So, all right, everybody. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Be safe out there and happy railroading.